Welcome to the Real Life Weight Loss Podcast, where we cut through the confusion and get down to the truth about what really works for real people when it comes to losing weight, having incredible health, and a body that you love. We believe that losing weight is really about gaining life, doing things you never thought you could, having renewed confidence, and enjoying your body more than ever. I'm your host, Corey Little. Now let's get to it. Hello and welcome back. This is episode number 281. And today I will explain to you why your body is actually the result and not the reason. Now that may kind of make sense. It may not make much sense. Hang with me. It'll all come together. But first, I just want to take a few moments to say thank you. A sincere, heartfelt thank you. Number one, thank you for listening. Thank you for spending some of your time with me today. Time is our most valuable resource and you're spending some with me and I don't take that for granted. Number two, I want to thank all of you who have taken the time to post reviews on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or my Facebook page or wherever you've posted reviews. Thank you so much. It means so much to me. And honestly, a great review, especially on Apple Podcasts or maybe on Spotify, a great review really helps out the podcast. It really helps to spread the word. And so I really appreciate that. Next, I want to thank all of you who are sharing this show, sharing this podcast with your friends and family. It means the world to me whenever you do that. And then lastly, I want to give a special thank you to everyone who has taken the time to send me a message, to shoot me an email, just letting me know that you're listening and, you know, about a certain episode that maybe you really liked or just how the podcast is impacting your life overall. Or maybe you shot me a Instagram message. I read every single one of those and I respond to pretty much every single one. And so I just thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means so much. Now, let's get back to today. So what's up with this whole thing about your body being the reason and not the result. Well, I believe this is what probably 99.9% of people get wrong when it comes to losing weight. But here's the thing. Once you understand the truth that I'm going to explain to you, it will absolutely revolutionize how you go about losing weight. It will totally, literally shift your entire mindset and open your eyes like never before. And you will find so much freedom. And I, I would argue that you'll also find a much clearer and more peaceful path to the weight loss success that you want to have. Now, as I go through and share these principles and concepts, some of you are going to go, yeah, Corey, I I get that. I understand it. But I challenge you to really take it on and really probe kind of at a deeper level because some things we just kind of skim over and we think, oh yeah, I get that. And we, we understand it from a very surface level, but until we truly think through it, and ask ourselves some questions, which I will provide, uh, it's really tough to understand and it's really tough to apply to our lives. So I encourage you all to do that. Now, this is just the intro for today's episode. The episode is actually some teaching that I did inside my coaching group. I don't usually share those teachings. Those are obviously specifically for people inside the coaching group. I usually do those, gosh, at least once per week and we address various things that are going on within the group and we do a lot of coaching and Q&A and all sorts of great things like that. If you're thinking about it, you should be in there. You should come join us. It's amazing. But this is actually a snippet from a teaching that I did inside the coaching group. I I received a lot of wonderful positive feedback in the coaching group. I think it really helped people and impacted them a lot. And I thought, you know what? I just want to put this out there and share this with everyone. So it's not well rehearsed. And I'm sure there will... There's probably a difference in the audio quality and maybe some mess ups along the way. But hey, it is what it is. It's real life and it's, uh, it's a true teaching. So I hope that it is helpful. Without further ado, let's get into it right now. But sometimes I think there are some things that we kind of skim the surface on. We kind of, we sort of get it. We think we understand it, but we don't fully like grasp it. And so tonight, um, this may be hugely profound, or it may be just that you've skimmed the surface, but I want to kind of dig into it a little more. And that is this central idea that your body the body in general is the result and not the reason. And now for some of you that may, you may think, okay, that kind of makes sense. And for some of you, what in the world is he talking about? So hang with me. Your body is the result and not the reason. See, here's the thing. We think, we believe that our body is the reason. It's the reason we're unhappy or we're stressed, whatever, right? Right. But this is what I want to make very clear. Hang with me. Your body is not the reason that you're unhappy. 
And I'm not saying, you may be like, Corey, dude, I'm not unhappy. I'm not saying all these apply to everyone, right? I'm going to go through a bunch of different ones. But your body, if you have feelings of unhappiness and you're like, oh my gosh, if I could just lose this weight, then I would be happy. What I'm here telling you is your body is not the reason that you're unhappy. Your body is not the reason that you're stressed. It's not the reason that you don't feel confident. It's not the reason that you feel so overwhelmed. It's not the reason that you take care of everything and everyone else, but neglect yourself. It's not the reason that you're so mean to yourself. Well, Corey, yes, it is. Dude, if I, if I looked different, then I wouldn't say such mean things to myself. Oh, not necessarily. It's not the reason that you're so mean to yourself. It's not the reason that sometimes you have such strong emotions that really just feel like a, like a tidal wave coming in and just overpowering you. Your body is not the reason. It's the result. Hang with me. It just might be the result of being unhappy about too many other things in your life. What, Corey, what are you talking about? Hang with me. So if your body is not the reason that you're unhappy, it just might be that the body you have and the health that you have right now in your life is actually the result of you being unhappy about too many other things in your life. And therefore it's manifesting in the body that you have. Your body is not the reason, but it might be the result of you being under too much stress. It, the body you have right now is might be the result of not feeling confident and not believing in yourself and in your ability to do something about it. So you think, man, if I, I'm, I'm not confident and I'm not confident because my body looks this way. What I'm telling you is it's the other way around. The reason your body is where it's at is because you don't believe in yourself and you're not confident. It's not the reason, it's the result. Your body is possibly the result of all the overwhelm that you feel with your life. And you may say, well, Corey, it's just one more thing overwhelming me. I hear you. I hear you. But if I had to guess, even if we took your body out of the equation, there's still a lot of other overwhelm in your life that's maybe led to some of the decisions that have led to the body you have now. Your body is not the reason. It's the result of neglecting yourself and your needs and your desires and constantly putting others ahead of you. It might be the result of being so mean to yourself. No, Corey, it's the other way around, dude. It, I'm mean to myself because of my body. No, 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 no. What I'm telling you is when you're mean to yourself, it can lead to you making poor decisions that lead to a body you don't like. It feeds off itself. Your body just might be the result of not being able to, ooh, gang, turn the volume up, pay attention, grab your pen, grab your pad, get ready to write this down. Your body is not the reason, but it is more than likely the result of not being able to or willing to feel, process, and regulate your emotions. Psy psychologists call it emotional regulation. And if we can't do that, then we're going to do, we're going to have to do something else with our emotions. And guess what that means sometimes? Eating our emotions, mm -hmm. trying to soothe our emotions with food because we don't know how to do it. We are not able or willing to feel, to process, and to regulate our emotions without food. Your body is the result of all of these things. It is not the reason that you're experiencing these things. Do you feel me? Do you see where I'm going with this? And here's the thing. If that is true, if what I'm explaining to you is true, then guess what? Fixing your body will not fix those things. And so many people, like <laughs> some of you may be like, hey man, Corey, I get it, dude. That's why I'm here. And I hope that's true. We're going to keep moving through this, keep moving through this teaching, right? But like, I promise you guys and gals, pay attention out there in the world. So many people, everything I just listed earlier, unhappy, stressed. Lack of confidence, overwhelmed, neglecting oneself while taking care of everything else and everyone else, being mean to yourself, being super emotional and not being able to navigate and handle those emotions. A lot, we, we have all these things going on inside of us, like a big whirlwind, like a big tornado, right? And then somehow we latch onto this idea, if I could just get my body and my health and my eating under control, then all this stuff would calm down. We think that our body is causing this whirlwind when in reality it's this whirlwind that's causing our body and fixing our body won't fix that stuff. 
And that's what we really want. That's what we really want, gang. That's what people don't realize. We don't just want to be skinny. <laughs> we don't like, yeah, that's nice. That would be nice too, right? I want to lose weight. I want to be skinny. I want to be fit. I want to, you know, love the way I look. I hear you. I get it. But that we don't want just that. We don't just want to be skinny. We want the stuff that we believe comes with it. We want to be happy, less stressed, more confident, not constantly overwhelmed and overloaded. We want to stop being so mean to ourselves. We want to love ourselves and we want to be able to navigate our emotions and all that life throws at us without having a total breakdown, falling off the wagon and then soothing ourselves and drowning ourselves by eating a wheel wheelbarrow full of ice cream and cookies <laughs> or chips or pretzels or whatever, right? That's what we really want. And we think if I can fix my body, well, then I'll get that stuff. And what I'm telling you is it's backwards. If you're ever going to get the things that you really want, if, if, if you're connecting with what I'm sharing, then hear me out. If you're ever going to get those things, the things you really want, you must address the root cause, the underlying reasons, you, not the result. You can I tell you guys this all the time. I say it on the podcast all the time. I've sat across from people who look like they're ready to do a photo shoot. They look like they're ready to be on the front of a fitness magazine. And they hate their body. They're disgusted with where they are. Some of them have tears in their eyes because they achieve what they thought was their goal and they still aren't happy. It's not the body. That's not, that, <laughs> that's the result, not the reason. So if you're ever going to get the things that you really want, then you must address the root cause, the underlying reasons and not the result, not the body. And that's why my friends, we do the mental work and a huge part of the mental work. Don't miss this. A huge part of the mental work is stepping out of the cycle because all of the reasons and the results and all those things, they play off of one another, right? So let's just go through a few of them. Um, if someone doesn't feel real confident about themselves or confident in their abilities to do something about things, well, then Obviously, as life throws more at them, they're going to feel more overwhelmed. And when they feel more overwhelmed, they feel stressed. And then if they get stressed, they might feel emotional, like they're a failure in this area and that area and this area. And then the bully in the brain starts about how bad they're a failure with their own body. Look at you. Look at you. I mean, you walk by a mirror, you catch a glimpse of yourself. You see a picture somebody posted on social media that you didn't even know they were taking or some new picture at work, you know, that it was a, you know, a, a staff picture and you see yourself and you're disgusted and then you start beating up on yourself. But all this is fueled by all those other things, all that other stress and overwhelm and this and that that's telling you you're terrible and you're a failure at being a parent and you're a failure at being a husband, you're a terrible wife and nobody likes you and your friends don't even like you no more. And how in the world did you let yourself get here and da, 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 da. So then what do you do? You do anything possible to try to stop this and silence this. And you grab onto some, sadly, maybe some all or nothing solution, right? That promises all or nothing does all or nothing gives you this, this false, this fake promise, all or nothing promises results or relief. All or nothing says, if you'll do this, if you'll go all in, you'll get results. And then when you get really, really, really stressed and you realize that this is stressing you out as much or more as everything else in life, then if you'll just quit, then you'll have relief. And both are a lie. If you go all in, you might get some results, but you're going to be miserable and it requires perfection. And then you eventually can't do that. And so then it screams at you to quit so that you'll get relief. But see, all these things play off of them, play off of one another. All of the, all of these reasons and results and all of the things with your body, they play off of one another and they form this vicious cycle, this vicious emotional diet, weight loss. How did I let myself get here? I'm so disappointed in myself cycle. And not being happy about your body fuels your stress and your lack of confidence and your lack of confidence and your stress fuel your overwhelm and all of these emotions fuel you to eat things that you're not exactly happy about eating. And then that fuels you to not have the body you want. And then not having the body you want fuels the stress and the overwhelm and the emotion. Do you guys see this whole cycle? It just rolls on and rolls on and rolls on. And if you want to get the things you really want, then you have to step out of that cycle. Because all of the reasons and the results, they play off of one another. So, if you connected with that, you may think, well, how, how do I step out of that cycle? Like, Corey, you just described me to a T, man. That's why I'm in this group. How do I step out of the cycle? This whole program is designed to help you step out of the cycle. 
but what I'm telling, and I'm not, I'm not sharing this message tonight because I'm like, Oh, I see a bunch of people not doing this. No, it's not that at all. I just want to reiterate things and communicate things in a really compassionate way. And in a, in a way, in a slightly different way that maybe hits home a little bit different. Here's how you step out of that cycle. Number one, by being willing to slow down and to, to constantly choose against, to consistently day after day, choose against all or nothing. No, I'm not doing that. That's one big way you step out of it. Another big way you step out of that cycle is by not weighing yourself all the time. Another big way that you step out of that cycle is by celebrating your victories. And then another big way, maybe the biggest way that you step out of that cycle is by doing the mental work, not just... Like I said earlier, gang, a lot of us, we, we go, oh, yeah, that's it, man. Corey's like, man, you got you want to change your body? You got to first change your brain. You need to change your brain also. Oh, yeah, I get it. I get it. That's, that's really important. There's a massive, huge, grand canyon chasm of a difference between hearing something and under, or reading something and understanding that, oh, wow, that clicks. That's an aha moment. That's incredibly important. There's a huge difference between that and then applying it. And applying it again and messing up and go, wait, how, what, where was my blind spot? Let me get some coaching on that. Let me post in the group. Let me ask a question on the coaching call. There's a huge chasm between reading, gaining a little bit of knowledge, understanding the importance, and then on this side of the Grand Canyon is having the skill of actually doing it, implementing it day to day to day to day, taking it very seriously and understanding like, wait, I got to do work around this because I will just naturally fall back into my old thought habit, thought habits and into my old, my, my old mental patterns and all of these things. So I have a few questions as I wrap this up. A few questions for you to explore. You can explore them on your own. You can post uh, your responses in the group. It's entirely up to you. Here's the first one. What did you or what do you think that losing weight will bring? What did you or do you think that losing weight will bring to you and your life? Well, I'll start to love my body. I've always hated the way I look, but I'll start to love my body if I can lose weight. And I won't worry all the time. God, it just is running in my brain all the time. What should I eat? What shouldn't I eat? Got to lose this weight. Got to lose this weight. So, man, it'll be off my mind more. Well, of course, you know, I just won't be stressed as much. Like I have stress in so many other areas of life. This is one other stressor. If I could just lose the weight that I could be done, <laughs> I could be done and it wouldn't be a stressor on me. Of course, you know, I'll just be more confident, man. My body's been holding me back for so long. And if I could just lose this weight, I'll be more confident. Man, I just, I'm sick of being so mean to myself. And I really believe if I can lose this weight, then I'll stop being so mean to myself. Or what? Something else. There's a million other things it could be. So that's question number one. What do you think that losing weight will bring to you and to your life? Question number two. Were you, are you falling victim to trying to fix the result and not the root cause reason? So let me say that a slightly different way. Have you been falling victim to trying to fix your body in hopes that it will bring all of these other things? Instead of addressing the root cause issues, the root cause reasons that are behind the body that you have. The root cause reasons being the mental stuff, the stress, the overwhelm, the unhappiness, not showing up for yourself, not believing in yourself, embracing all or nothing, you know, trying short-term fixes, all these things, right? So that's question number two. Question number three. What can you do moving forward? specifically, you guys know we like specifics. We like data, data, and we like specifics. What can you do moving forward specifically to step out of the cycle? Where is the cycle grabbing you and sucking you back in? Maybe it's weighing less often. Maybe it's focusing as much or more on the mental aspect of this whole process as you are on the food and exercise stuff. Gang, I know, look, I am a practical, logical, hands-on like type of dude. Like, let's get it. Give me, give me some, some action steps, man. Don't tell me to freaking meditate. Are you kidding me? Like the mental work. I know it's powerful. It's important. I get it. Give me some stuff to do. Tell me what to eat. Tell me what exercises to do. Tell me what not to eat. Like I get it. I understand. But I'm telling you, if you want to truly change your life and you want to get though, all those things I mentioned earlier, then the mental part is as or more important moving from 
I talked about rejecting all or nothing. I talked about all these, like digging into your emotional home. What is your emotional home? Beginning the process of seeing that, building a new emotional home. Are you a punisher or pretender? Being able to start seeing your life and your decisions through that lens. Another huge one that I talk about a lot in the group is moving from force to choice. Everything in you for so long, if you've been trying typical weight loss strategies, tells you you must force weight loss. Force this diet, force this exercise. And sure, there's times when we have to exert discipline, but what I want you to do as you move through this program is to move more and more and more through your awareness and through taking ownership of this process to move more and more and more away from force and into choice. Nobody's making me do this. This is what I choose. It's 3 p.m. I can eat that donut. It's my life. It's my life. I'm a freaking grown up. I can eat that donut or I can eat that protein bar or I can drink that protein shake and I have a choice. And you know what? Nobody's forcing me to do anything. I'm choosing that protein bar because that represents what I want for my life. And it's a way that I want to show up for myself and and, and practice self-care. So the second thing that you might, second thing that might really help you step out of the cycle, because that was our question, right? What specifically can you do moving forward to step out of the cycle? Weighing less often, that's one option. Another option was focusing as much or more on the mental stuff as the food and exercise stuff. Because I have a feeling that some of us are skimming by that stuff. We, we, and I, I can say this because I'm guilty of it in so many areas of my life. We see the importance of something. We dig in just enough to go, yeah, wow, that's, in, ah, I need to circle back around to that. I want to touch on that more. I don't want to get in more in depth with that. And then we plow past it to the action items. And so how can you do that? Just revisit module three and module five. Those are the two mindset modules. Revisit module three, revisit module five, Jump in the coaching group, ask questions, jump on coaching calls. Hey, what's going on here? Corey, let me, let me dig into you. Let me, or let me dig into your head about this. Let me see what you, how you feel about it. Am I going all or nothing? Am I, am I practicing too much grace? Am I not doing enough tough love? Am I swinging towards this end of the spectrum, towards that end of the spectrum? What's going on here? Revisit module three, revisit module five. Listen to them again with fresh ears, print out the PDFs, read them again, do those exercises. Another thing that you can potentially do to step out of the cycle is dig down to figure out what it is you really want. <laughs> that can be a really eye-opening thing. Because if I had to guess, if I had to guess, a lot of you, if you did this, if you sat down with a pen and a piece of paper, maybe had a few sips of coffee and got real quiet and real still, and you said, okay, what do I really want? First thing in your brain is going to say, oh, I want to lose weight. And don't just be settled. Don't settle for that. Just start. No, no. Okay. Well, what do I, like I said earlier, question number one, what do I hope or believe that that weight loss will bring? Because gang, anything we want in life, if we want a certain house or we want a certain car or we want a certain job or a certain salary or a certain this or a certain that, or we want to lose a certain amount of weight, whatever we want in life, the only reason we want it is because the feeling that we believe comes with it. We're not chasing stuff. We're chasing feelings. We're chasing the, the mental, emotional state that we believe comes along with that thing that we want. And that's true for weight loss as much or more than it is for anything else. And that's the whole point of tonight. We can't fix our life by fixing our body. It doesn't work that way. And when I say fix our life, I mean all that other stuff, the overwhelm, the stress, the unhappiness, whatever. But if we begin to work on those other things, the weight loss is an amazing side effect. So maybe an incredible way to step out of the cycle is to go, yeah, I want to lose weight. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, guys. Nothing wrong with that. But here's the thing. If I get real honest, what I, the reason I want to lose the weight is because I just want peace of mind, man. I'm sick of it being on my mind nonstop all the time. Boom, beautiful. Okay, Corey, I want to lose weight, but you know what? The reason I really want to lose the weight is because... I'm almost at a place where I just feel like a failure and I feel so defeated because I've never been able to do it. And I just really want to know that I have what it takes. And if I know if I, if, if I feel like I have what it takes, then really with that comes confidence. Cause guess what guys, guys, gals, all of you, when you feel like you have what it takes, you're confident. When you don't feel like you have what it takes, you're not confident. You don't walk around confident. So maybe that's, that's wrapped up in it. You know, 
I want to lose weight because oh, I'm so freaking mean to myself. Man, so you know what, really, Corey, it's kind of like Susan said on the podcast episode, I really just want to overcome the bully in my brain. You know, yeah, I think I'd like to lose 30 pounds, but if I lost 14 or 15 pounds and the bully in my brain was suddenly quiet and I could manage that, oh my gosh, that would be like a dream come true. So dig into that, possibly, for those of you that feel connected. What is it that you really want? I'll say one last thing, and then we'll wrap this up, and we'll move on to questions of coaching. I challenge all of you because I, I say this because I'm guilty. I'm guilty for so much of the mental stuff because it's not concrete and because it's not a do it check mark necessarily. We see it, we acknowledge it, but we skim it and we move on and we don't even realize we're doing it. If you think making food or exercise changes are tough, Oftentimes the mental work is even tougher because it requires us to go to a place that we don't want to go. It requires us to sometimes go somewhere that's not fun or may feel uncomfortable or painful. And some of you in this group are amazing at doing it. And some of you are maybe resistant. And then there's another group of people and you guys are, I love all of you. You're all amazing. We all bring unique things to the table, but there's some of us that go so deep down this rabbit hole, we kind of get lost <laughs> and we suddenly are taking no action with food and exercise and we're just doing the mental work. And if that's your primary goal, that's okay. There's no big deal. But what I don't want, don't, so let me, I'm all about balance. You guys and gals know what I don't want is you to get three or four or five months down the road and you're, you know, 27 miles deep down the mental rabbit hole. And you're like, God, I'm so frustrated. I haven't lost any weight. Well, to lose weight, we got to take action too. You know, we, that's why that's why we do both of these things. We change what we do, we change how we think. So I'm not telling any of you to just abort all of your action items, all of your food and exercise action items, and just focus on the mental. No, 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 no. I'm saying to put as much or more focus on the mental side of things. If you are someone who's been making great progress with the food and exercise, maybe you just go, okay, I'm going to hang right here for now. I'm going to stabilize where I'm at, and I am going to dig into module three, or I'm going to dig into module five, because for so many of us, we see it, we kind of acknowledge, yeah, that's important. That's powerful. We skim by it and we move on and we don't even realize we did it. Guys, the mental work, it takes commitment. It takes practice, 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 and then a willingness to change. It's just like the food and exercise stuff. And it's exactly the same. But for some reason, I think because it's this, it's not concrete and it's mental, we, we just think that knowledge of it is what we need. And the knowledge is important. The knowledge is powerful. But we we can not only have the knowledge, we got to convert that knowledge into know-how by practicing, practicing. So, ah, okay. All right, my friends. I hope that was helpful. I hope that you will also maybe share this episode with a friend or a family member. And I hope the two or three of you will discuss it, get together and go, hey, what'd you think about this? That was really basic, plain stuff. Or no, wow, I, it really hit me in a different way. That is one of the best ways to use this podcast in order to learn and grow. Share it with a friend or family member, get together with them and discuss it, or maybe just text back and forth about it. Now, before I sign off, just a friendly reminder that if you would like to support this podcast, there are two really big ways you can do that. Number one, take the next step and join my inner circle coaching program. This is the biggest win-win by far. You just got a little snippet of, and truly it's a tiny snippet of kind of what goes on in the inner circle group. There's, you know, kind of weekly teaching. There's a very specific step-by-step -step program we use and of course, I and a couple other coaches are there for you to help you through no matter what you're facing. This is the most powerful way for you to not only support this podcast, but to also support yourself on your health and weight loss journey. You'll not only get access to the amazing community of support, my private circle, or excuse me, my private inner circle coaching group, but you'll also get my step-by-step -step roadmap to lose weight, to change your brain, and to gain confidence. 99% of the time, if someone likes this podcast, then they absolutely love the coaching group. If you want more info about this, you can shoot an email to support at corylittlecoaching.com and we will take care of you. You'll find that uh, address down in the show notes as well. The second way that you can support this podcast, if you'd like to, is to purchase Rise Nutrition products. These are products that I believe in, I trust, and I and my clients actually take on a consistent basis. If you're interested in giving Rise products a try, you can find them on Amazon or at the website challenge, the number two, rise.com. I'll include that down in the show notes. And lastly, I would just like to say again, 
Thank you so much for listening. I am absolutely honored that you spent some of your time with me today. And please never forget that there's so much more to you than a number. So don't let the scales dictate your headspace or dominate your emotions for the day. No, no, no. There's so much more to you than that. And losing weight's incredible. And I love helping people lose weight. But losing weight is really all about gaining life. It's a lot of the stuff I talked about in the teaching today about gaining life and getting the stuff that you really want out of life and living the life you've always wanted to. And here's the thing. Maybe you've tried and failed before. It's okay. I know you can do it. You borrow my belief. Keep coming back. I'll keep working on you. We will get you there, my friends. Thank you again. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.